has no known criminal history to the crime. Police say they did it using genetic genealogy. The company ran the then unknown DNA profile through a public database, and there was a partial match, enough to create a family tree that included two brothers who lived in North Tacoma near Puget Park in 1986. That led a Tacoma police detective this month to follow Hartman from work to a nearby restaurant to try and get a DNA sample. I observed him uh, using the napkin multiple times. Um, he crumpled it up, put it into a bag, then crumpled that bag up, and then uh, voluntarily abandoned that bag uh, as he left the restaurant. Uh, and I was able to uh, collect it and get that submitted to the lab. Prosecutors say the lab showed the DNA sample on the used napkin in June matched the preserved DNA sample from 1986 and led detectives to arrest Hartman, who had lived a quiet, unassuming life in Lakewood for years, and provide a sense of vindication for Tacoma's police department, who worked the case for so long. If you think you can run, you're wrong. If you think you can hide, you're wrong. If you think that the Tacoma Police Department is going to give up, you're wrong. In the way of background of those of you who were living in Tacoma back in 1986, as I was, a rookie police officer at the time, you may recall that this horrific crime shook our community. On Wednesday, March 26, 1986, 6th grader Michelle Welch and her two younger sisters visited Tugit Park, located in the 3,300 block of North Proctor Street in Tacoma. At approximately 11 a.m., Michelle left the park to return home to get lunch for her and her sisters. Around 12.30 that day, her sisters left the park to use the restroom at a nearby business. They returned to the park around 1 o'clock and continued to play in the gulch under a nearby bridge. Michelle's younger sisters never saw her, but about 2 p.m., noticed Michelle's bike and her lunch was, that she prepared was at the location uh, in the park where they were to meet and have a picnic. The girls notified the regular babysitter who responded to the park. Shortly thereafter, Michelle's mother made aware, was made aware of, of her missing child and the police were called. Tacoma police officers were on the scene after 3 p.m. and preliminary search was performed. A coordinated search by search and rescue personnel began around 5.30 in the evening. A search dog found Michelle's body just before 11 p.m. that night in an isolated area in the gulch, more than a quarter away from the play area. Michelle had been sexually assaulted and murdered. The crime scene was processed for evidence, and unknown DNA was recovered at the time. A number of men were investigated for the crime based on witness statements relating to males being seen in the area. Gary Hartman was not one of those individuals. For many years, it was suspected that the same person who killed Michelle Welch was also responsible for the murder of Jenny Bastion. The two incidents occurred just within several months apart of each other. In 20, 2011, the Tacoma Police Department officially created its cold case unit to address over 150 unsolved homicides in our department's history including the Michelle Welch and the Jennifer Bastion cases. In 2013, a DNA profile was obtained in the case of Jennifer Bastion. It was determined then that the profiles were separate. And for the first time, investigators knew they were looking for two separate suspects. In 2016, the Tacoma Police Department worked with Parabon Nanolabs on a DNA phenotype profile. That profile yielded a composite that described the characteristics of a possible suspect, which includes hair color, eye color, skin tone, and body type. In May 2018, our cold case unit continued its work with Parabon Nanolabs, specifically their genetic genealogist, in hopes of locating a possible suspect from the suspect DNA initially recovered at the crime scene. Michelle Welch. Genetic genealogy uses a DNA technology 
to identify subjects by matching the unknown profile to a family member. Traditional genealogy is then used to build a family tree from publicly available websites. Through this process, two brothers were identified as possible suspects. Additionally, the age of the brothers made them capable of committing this crime, and they both lived in the north end of Tacoma in 1986. Armed with that information, we collected abandoned DNA from the two brothers. The DNA samples were then sent to the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab. On Tuesday, June 19th, the lab contacted us with a match between the original DNA and the sample collected from Gary Hartman. That led to his arrest on Wednesday, the 20th of June, and closed a chapter 